Hey you guys, I'm back. Okay, so I wanted to go ahead and explain the cultural iceberg, like how I went ahead and did this. So this is the iceberg that I used and it was like really easy to use. So um, what I did was like, you don't have to really go into everything. So I just kind of looked at what it was like the point. So it says food. So I eat soul food, Jewish food, veggies, fruit, kosher food, and I'm also vegan. Then language. I speak German, Spanish, English, and Ebonics. Flags. I really don't represent a flag. Like, I don't give a F about a flag. Festivals. I go to art festivals. I go to beer festivals, but not all the time. I go to all festivals. I like hay rides. I like all these different things fashion i'm such a couture person it does not make sense holidays we actually have we only celebrate birthdays and we have a six month birthday so we call these our made up holidays me and my son have made up holidays and we have a tradition that we keep to ourselves about the holidays music we celebrate christmas but that's it music i listen to everything i'm eclectic with music performance I do whatever. Uh, it's not something that we naturally do. But anytime I have to do a performance, it's usually for Black History Month or it's usually for Hispanic Heritage Month. I've never done anything for like Jewish Culture Month or Native American uh, Month. It's like always like with that, it's always more artistic than it is like um, like dance. So it's like usually arts and crafts with those things. Literature, I read everything, but I predominantly stay with Black American culture. I sometimes read books by Asian people. Um, and that's it. Games. Um, we play everything. But we like Monopoly and like we like board games more so than anything. Board games. And games where we can move around. Oh my God, smack it. Like we're the where the uh, the the cream goes into your face, all that stuff. We like that stuff. So next, um, it was like the communication styles and rules. So like facial expressions. I don't do that because it's something that was like not something that we could do in our house. Gestures. I use my hands. Eye contact. I look people straight in the eye. Personal space. I like it. I don't like touching from everybody. My body language is usually just, I'm just in one solid position. I'm stiff. Conversational pat pattern in different social settings. Like, so I am like the four-faced person at home. I'm totally like Ebonics. That's why sometimes on the show, I'm very improper. As soon as I get to Texas, I probably don't speak Ebonics at all. Like, it's so hard to come out. Um, and then when I'm like a pre professional setting, I don't even talk as much. I don't talk at all, really. Um, people don't really allow me to give presentations because they're usually there to be in competition with me for some reason, or they've stolen my research in some kind of way, so they don't want to be outed. Um, conversational patterns in, okay, I'm still on now. And then the last one is like, as far as writing, I usually am like a writer of story. So I use like a very familiar language. Um, and if I'm doing it scientifically, I just stick to the facts. Notions of courtesy and manners. I really like polite people. Uh, I am polite myself. I like people that have manners. It's actually a turn on for me. Friendship. I love friendship. I'm a servant leader as far as leadership goes. I'm very clean. I like to stay modest. I like to keep myself covered in beauty overall. Even if she doesn't dress great, everybody is sort of beautiful to me. Um, concepts, self, I love myself, time, I like to be on time or earlier, past and future, my past self has dealt with a lot of my future self is trying to get away from it, roles related to age six, so I did this one, and it was like, because that's like really deep culture, and it's like, that's the subconscious culture, the concepts, all concepts are like a subconscious culture, so, um, age six, class and family, um, it's like I am a child. I'm like every child, like wherever house I go. So I'm the oldest, the middle, the only child, oldest to the youngest. So it's like I really don't have issues as far as like uh, how the roles are or whatever. That's probably why I'm like a more of a non-binary person. 
uh, sex, and it's also because I'm Native American too. But then, as a female, I'm not like this is a male's role. This is a female's role. This is what I think I need to do. I just do what I have to do. I just if you can learn how to do it, you can do it. Class, socioeconomic status, like we were a low income family, but I also grew up in a household that was like not upper class. It was like middle, upper middle class. So um, I I I always went through just from any household from lower from um low income to upper class households so I just like I don't really know how to tell you my family is just like very diverse fairness I'm fair to all people justice I think everybody deserves it even me attitudes towards elders take care of them adolescents make sure you take care of them dependents uh I take care of them rules expectations it's like it's not a lot for me. It's like that person has to be themselves, like themselves. I work and I don't mind doing it. Authority is like respect it. Respect my authority. Cooperation versus competition. I prefer cooperation. Um, religion. I don't have one courtship. I like dating and uh, of like a traditional courtship. I like a traditional marriage. I think my friends are my children. I do make decisions as a family and I solve problems as a family. If that's what it, if that's what it entails, if it's going to be a bunch of like bullshit associated with all these things, then I don't want to deal with it. So it's like, that's what I was looking at. It's like, so I just went ahead and went through everything. And all I found out about myself is that again, it just goes back to my personality that I'm supportive. Um, that I'm respectable of other cultures in mind too. The color for, for me, I know your color doesn't mean anything because of the color because of my color and then how my culture is. So color doesn't make you or break you. So it's like we have to get out of that stigmatism or whatever. So I did find out, yeah, I'm still like supportive. I s I'm a quality time person. Like if you go through, I'm secure, that's my attachment style. It's like even if you go through your iceberg and you learn all these different things about yourself that's it like it's just you just learn a lot you learn a lot you know I didn't really find out that I'm creative I'm creative though I'm intellectual I'm adventurous I'm organized I'm determined I earn friendships um I like excitement and admiration I'm a romantic I really am a romantic I'm a romantic towards my partner even though I'm a woman so again that's like a non-binary thing like I would romance a guy for real. I romance men all the time. And so that's it. It's like, I just am who I am. Like, it's like, again, you want to do that. So you see that the sur the surface culture, the, part of, the point of doing a cultural identity is to see that your surface culture is different from your deep culture and your, your unconscious role. So it's like, that's what defines you. All the things that people cannot see is what defines you. And with that, you don't have to give it to them. You don't have to give it to them. Even though I just went over mine on, on um, camera or whatever, recording, whatever, you don't have to tell them those things. Like that is something that you can totally keep to yourself. They don't have to know. They have a right though to get to know you for who you are from the surface. You understand it's like if you have any issues with your surface culture, that means that you need counseling. If you have any issues with anybody else's surface culture, then you then you need counseling like you actually have to get help for that. Because really everything else deep below, everything beneath is not really your business. It's nothing you can discriminate against somebody for. You see I'm heterosexual, I'm monogamous, none of that. I didn't even ask myself those questions. Um, and that's it. Like, it's like, you really have to think about that. So you can't force somebody to be polyamorous. You can't force them to go outside their roles about outside their religion for you. You have to really realize that nobody can change based on what you think their issues are. You see what I'm saying? It's not something you can change. Anyway, that's it. It's Shantae Brown, Sugar Talk. Under Black Unicorns for Shakitia, telling you guys to have a great day.